are you, sir? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Uh, thank you once again for taking the time out to talk to us. We appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I appreciate you uh, having me on and I look forward to talking with you. Yeah, and uh, where are you right now? Uh, I, I, I heard that you moved to Tennessee from Arizona. Yeah, I'm actually uh, here now. I'm in the outskirts of Knoxville, Tennessee here. Okay. And uh, I just moved here right after my fight and uh, just... You know, searching for a different lifestyle, different way of raising my kids, having a different life. Uh, um, you know, something I always wanted and uh, we've grown to want as a family is, you know, a little miniature farm, little farm work, you know, do that kind of stuff, that kind of living. So, uh, you know, we're out here uh, living, the, living the adventure. Yeah, and wh what was the reason for you? Because you were well settled in Arizona. Why did you just, uh, you know, decide to move to Tennessee? Yeah, you know, uh, I... People, quite a few people have asked me that, um, you know, with my career going on and uh, being at, you know, the best gym in the world, MMA Lab and, and stuff like that and having great training partners, great, great coaches. Uh, the ultimate decision was, uh, you know, family comes first to me and um, everything else comes second. So this is something we wanted, that I wanted, that my wife wanted. We wanted for our family, for our kids. It's something we wanted to do. Uh, we didn't want to wait because, you know, by then, if we waited before when I was done fighting, you know, the kids would be growing. Um, they'd be, you know, at the same school, you know, finishing out high school and not wanting to move and not wanting to do that. So it's something we wanted for them to grow up in and not to wait till they're older. And uh, so that was the ultimate decision. I'll still go back to my camps at the MMA lab and be there. Um, but, you know, this is something I needed to do for my family and wanted to do. So uh, we decided to make the move. Right. Uh, so before talking about your fight with Leon Edwards, before talking about the MMA labs and John Crouch, I wanted to first talk to you about your win over uh, uh, Sage Northcutt, that one <laughs> post-fight uh, uh, you know, flip that you did that kind of uh, put you on the map. So just leading up to the fight, because at that point, it almost looked like UFC was building Sage to be the next uh, breakout star, the, the future generation. Did it kind of offend you because a lot of people were, were you know, looking at Sage Northcutt? as a prospect uh you know no it didn't offend me or anything you know uh, of course you know a company if they see a guy with potential you know good looks whatever everything else you know uh hopefully use them as a key to you know help build the sport um the fact is is that you know i realized and a lot of people other people saw it too is that you know he wasn't at the skill level yet and so um no one's been tested. It. No one's tested him yet. So at that time, you know, it was it was my turn. I got the opportunity to be the one to to really give him a test, and um, uh, I knew from the get go that I was going to come out with the win. And after the fight, was it just a spur of the moment kind of thing that you did, or did you just go in there thinking, okay, I'm going to defeat him, and after that, I'm just going to you know do the role that you did? <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't pre pre planned or anything. Uh, it was a spur of the moment kind of thing. Just kind of, you know, just being silly and and dumb and kind of like to the fans like hey ha you know make fun of myself in a way like you know he usually does flips after his fights and stuff like that like you know i can't do a flip you know back flip or front flip so uh the role was just kind of like hey see a normal guy like me you know not all chiseled up and whatever you know he can win a fight you know he doesn't have to you know do anything else or look any way he can you know be just as good Right now, so shifting focus to your fight in Rotterdam. Uh, so before the fight itself, what what was it like, you know, going to Rotterdam? What was your experience like? I was really cool. Um, you know, the flight was long or whatever, but I felt great. I felt great fight week. I felt great going in. Um, you know, it was nice being out there. The weather wasn't bad. It was nice. Walked around a little bit, looked around, um, saw a lot of cool, you know, buildings and architects and um you know a lot of nice food <laughs> but uh, uh it was it was good you know training up to fight week doing uh my night my practices there and and up to the fight you know they were great i felt great felt sharp uh, um everything was good you know everything was good going into uh going into the fight um yeah right. rotterdam was nice people were nice Right, and the other thing that a lot of people noticed was nail polish uh, during your fight. What, what was the story behind that? Yeah, so uh, since the Joe Proctor fight, um, 
So in between the time from the Colby fight and the Proctor fight, my daughter got really into painting nails and, and nail polish. So she'd paint my nails like every night and a uh, new color. We'd take it off, put it on, put it on, you know, take it off and do it again all over again every day. Um, so, uh, yeah, I just asked, you know, she wanted to paint my nails and happened to be like up to the fight and stuff. And they came out with us to Tennessee and um, for the fight in Nashville against Proctor. And uh, she painted my nails before the fight, and you know, because she wanted to, and I wanted. You know, it, was, it was fine. It was cool. So uh, uh, it kind of became a tradition. You know, she's gonna paint my nails before every fight, and you know, she still paints them in, in the meantime. So, right. And I also wanted to get this uh, from you as well. Uh, when you're a fighter, when you when you don't have kids, it's kind of a different dynamic, and the way you think is different as a fighter as well. How has that changed? You know, since you have have uh, had your kids. Uh, well, honestly, uh, I've had kids since I've been fighting. Um, my oldest son's eight years old, and uh, he'll be nine in January. And honestly, I've, I started training after he was born. Okay. Um, so, so I've had kids the whole time. Uh, now, now I have more kids. I have you know three kids. So uh, you know, it's kind of always been the same. You know, it's you know the drive to help you know give them a better life, help make money for them, to bring them in to support them. Uh, but also a big part of it is just you know, the drive I want for myself, the success I want for myself. Um, you know, I want to be successful. I want to be great. I want to do big things in the sport. I want to, uh, you know, fight for the belt. I want to get the belt. Um, so those things are, are the biggest things that constantly drive me. And then having my kids and having them and, and the support that they give me and the, the love that they give me, it just drives me that much more to want to be that much more successful. Right. Now, just talking about the Leon Edwards fight itself. Uh, one thing that a lot of people noticed in the very first round was you using a, a southpaw stance. Um, was that kind of a measured tactic just to avoid the body kicks that Leon throws? No, no absolutely not. Actually, I wasn't really worried about his kicks at all or anything. But uh, actually, I, I fight southpaw. Uh, I always come out southpaw in my fights. I do mix it up and switch orthodox at times in the fight. Um, but yeah, I'm a natural southpaw. Right, and the other thing that Dan Hardy and Gooden noticed during the fight was that as you go into the second and the third rounds, your number of strikes increases. It's almost double the average number of strikes uh, that other fighters use uh, in the second and the third rounds. Is that something, again, that, that you kind of measure uh, going into a fight? Uh, absolutely not. You know, uh, I don't really measure anything when I go into the fight. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of filling out process right in the beginning, but besides that, it's, you know, there's no holding back. There's no... You know, oh, at this, you know, this moment I got to push. At this moment I got. It's kind of, you know, I'm a slow starter to begin with. Uh, it's something I've been working on my whole career. Actually, in the beginning of my career, I thought I started really fast, and then somehow, as I've gotten more comfortable there, I've started slower and haven't been able to turn it back around. But um, so I start slow in the first, and just start picking up, get more comfortable, and start throwing more strikes. Um, I don't know. I think I just when as I get more comfortable, the the more attacks I'm going to throw, and as the fight goes on, it just favors more for me right and just can you give us your out uh, your take on what what happened during the fight how do you think it played out the entirety the outcome uh, of the fight itself yeah i mean uh overall you know it was his night he won the fight you know he did uh, a good job at uh you know getting me down and uh, holding me there um you know he was a better man that night uh for the most part you know i I, he wanted, you know, he's supposed to be known as a, a great striker in the UK. Um, I mean, diving for takedowns, not wanting to, to stand and bang with me. So, uh, I mean, that kind of tells me, like, where he's at, you know. Yeah, it's part of the game, okay, but you're supposed to be one of the top UK strikers. I'm over here, you know, giving it to you and dropping you. And I mean, I understand why you're diving for takedowns. You don't like the power. So, uh but yeah, I mean, he did good. He did good. He, uh, I wasn't able to pop up off some of his takedowns uh, as fast as I would have liked. Um, most of those ones happened where he was able to hold me down, happened from me throwing kicks and he's catching them and, you know, I'm falling over or he's driving them in for takedowns. So uh, he was able to hold me down from those. So good for him. Good job. Um, you know, I'll be working on those and, and getting better and, you know, switching things up in the fight. But uh, I'll definitely improve from this and come back better but uh, maybe i'll mix it up a little bit and throw some takedowns in and stuff too but uh to be honest i like to stand up for the fans of show so 
I was kind of disappointed. I thought we were going to have fight of the night. Uh, I thought it had potential for fight of the night. Um, but, you know, he came out with a completely different, you know, way of going about the fight. And it wasn't as exciting as I had hoped for. Right. Now, you know, just talking about you going back to the training camp. You're in Tennessee now. You have to go back uh, to Arizona. Have you? Ha- are you training right now? How does that work, uh, just moving between two uh, places just, just to go for the training camp? Uh, yeah, well, uh, right now I'm actually going to be on a little bit of a layoff. Um, I have a broken foot, and I actually go back Thursday and uh, see if I have to have surgery. It hasn't improved. They had me, they had me in a boot, so it hasn't improved, still in a lot of pain. Um, so most likely I'll probably have surgery um, is my guess. Um, but I find that out on Thursday. So, But when the time comes, you know, I'll be training here in Tennessee. Uh, Scott Holtzman trains here along with uh, a few other other guys, uh, Ovens trains here also uh, in Knoxville. So, you know, I have I have a, a gym to go to. I'll be training at Shield System Academy um, here in Knoxville. Uh, that's where Scott Holtzman trains while he's here in Tennessee. So I'll be training there. They got a lot of great guys. Uh, it's a great atmosphere. You know, great jiu-jitsu school. Um, you know, I'll be working constantly on improving my jiu-jitsu, improving my wrestling, even my striking. You know, getting better. Um, and then when it's time to go to the lab, you know, it's time to go to the lab. I pack up my bags. Uh, the worst part is I say bye to my family and uh, head over. But, you know, that's going to be the hardest part is, is saying bye to them. Uh, they definitely give me more drive while I'm there for sure, being gone and everything. And we've already talked about, you know, them coming out to visit during camp or me coming back home, home for the weekend or, you know, things. That, so I'm not staying away from them the whole camp. Right. Uh, so if, uh, let's say that the foot is broken, did anyone give you a timeline as to how many months you'd have to sit out? Uh, probably, you know, first half of 2018? Uh, they didn't really give me an exact timeline yet just because they weren't sure about surgery yet. They wanted to see. They have That foot is broken. There's a, a break and I have some torn ligaments that pulled pulled the bone away from uh, the rest of the bone, a piece of the bone away from the rest of the bone. So I have a bone, piece of bone floating in there. Um, so I'll do that, find out if I have to have surgery, and uh, then find out the, the estimated time. I'm hoping for a return in February, uh, but as of right now, we'll, we'll see. Okay, so you're ten- because you previously said you wanted to fight on the Sydney card, so you're kind of targeting the Perth card, uh, is it? I mean, Perth is in February, the Perth card. Oh, uh, I mean... Uh, the Sydney car was more of a, uh, you know, trying to get the the fight against Val Muhammad or whatever. And, uh, you know, I put my name in it for it. I hadn't had my foot checked yet, even though I was in pain. Uh, but I was holding out because I saw that he needed an opponent. I was going to push through and, you know, put on a show for the fans. Um, my name was in the mix, but then they weren't getting back to me. And I was still in a lot of pain for my foot. And I was just like, you know what? I don't think they're going to give it to me. And I haven't heard back from him. I contact them again. They said I was in the mix still, but wasn't going to hear nothing. So I decided just, you know what, it's better to just get healed up, be 100%, and then come back and fight. So I'm shooting for a February February fight, but uh, again, I got to see what the timeline is going to be on my foot when I go to the doctor on Thursday. Right. And as you previously said, you know, you train out of one of the best uh, uh, gyms in the world, the MMA lab uh, with Crouch, with previous world champions in Benson Henderson. So, can just take us through how it is like working with some of the biggest names uh, in MMA uh, at, the, at the moment? You know, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's, uh, it's the best. Um, you can't, can't replace that anywhere I go. You know, being here in Tennessee, I, I don't have that, but I will be going back to that. I will be getting better, and I will be getting better while I'm here. So, uh, when you go there and you work with those guys, you know, they take you on a whole nother level. Um, they push you every day. Every day is, you know, a battle, and every day is improving. And not only are they pushing you every day, you know, they're there for you every day. If I needed something, if I needed anything, family or, you know, a ride to the gym, you know, to go get groceries because I don't have a car if I broke down, I know I can count on one of those, you know, guys or girls at that gym to come help me out. You know, they're my family. They are my second family. Um, I consider every single one of them my brothers and sisters. So, um, you know, I know they're there for me. It's not only the the fight game, but we, you know we're in there to make each other's dreams come true. And you know they helped me get to this point to come to Tennessee to to buy land to have the 
little farm for my family and stuff. They helped me get here. You know, they did all that for me. So uh, I definitely owe them a lot as far as um, just life in general and all the people. And I owe them to help get, make them their dreams come true. So, you know, uh, it's just a bond you can't you can't have anywhere else, I guess. Right. And can you also describe uh, the working relationship that you share with uh, Crouch? Because we've heard so much about him. How is it like training with him? <laughs> Crouch is great, man. He's a... Uh, a good friend of mine, like I said, he's a family member, you know, um, but it's great. You know, he, he understands the game, not only the jiu-jitsu game, uh, he understands the striking. He's able to pick things apart and find the openings and uh, and learn and teach people. Um, and he's constantly wanting to get better for himself and to better for to better us. Um, you know, he's he's hitting mitts. He hits mitts uh, with our striking coach, you know, just to learn the, the striking game more, just to see how he can see more openings in the striking game. Um you know, he's a jiu-jitsu guy, and he's hitting mitts to learn for us. So, you know, the dedication that he shows um, towards us is just, you know, unmatchable. Right. Uh, so, you know, just looking at the welterweight division at this point, um, we have two big fights coming up, Co you know, the, the Stephen Thompson and Jorge Masvidal. And uh, we just had Colby Covington and Damian Meyer, the essential title eliminators, both the fights. What do you think about the welterweight division itself? Uh, you know, I think the welterweight division is wide open. Um, you know, there's some guys that are standing out more than others, but for the most part, you know, it's anybody's game right now. Um, you know, we're waiting to see who the next title fight's going to be. You know, is Woodley going to fight one of the, the guys coming up, you know, or is he going to wait to see how GSP does against Bisbean, you know, and maybe he fights GSP, you know. I don't know, but, yeah, I think it's just wide open. It gives everybody an opportunity in the welterweight division to, to really make a stamp and make a, a stride for the top, so... Um, I like that it's mixing up now, um, that guys are getting moved around. You know, I lost my last fight, which kind of puts me back a little bit, but I, you better believe that I'll be right back in the mix uh, coming up after my next fight. So who do you see? I mean, I know this is kind of far-fetched. It's uh, deep in the future. But if you had to pick a fight, uh, pick someone, uh, you know, who you think would propel you up the ladder, who would it be in the welterweight division at this point? Yeah, you know... Uh, Right now, you know, I haven't had a chance to sit down and think names or anything like that, but I do have a name in mind. Um, you know, especially now that he's coming off a loss, I'm coming off a loss. You know, it makes perfect sense. Uh, I would like to see, I would like to fight Cowboy. Um, I think it'd be a great fight for the fans. Um, it'd definitely be an opportunity for me to move up. It'd definitely be an opportunity for him to, to get a win. So uh, I think it's a great fight, and I think it's a, my win fight. Like, I win that fight. So um, I think it's a great matchup. I think it's an exciting fight for the fans. I think he'll give me, he'll give me the fight that you know we'll fight the fight that we want to fight to give the fans a great show. I think the you know our styles are gonna give the fans a great show. Uh, so I definitely think that's a fight I'd love to get. Right, and can we also get your thoughts quickly on uh, uh, the fight between Wonder Boy and uh, Jorge Masvidal? Who do you see uh, coming out as uh, as the victor? Ah, uh, that's a that's a tricky fight, you know. Masvidal's kind of been on the rise. He mixes up things well. His takedowns are striking. Uh, he's real tricky and slick. But uh, so is Stephen Thompson. Stephen Thompson, his striking's you know unbelievable. He's you know quick, fast, long, rangy, um, great kicks. So uh, I think Masvidal gives him some trouble, and uh, as long as if Thompson's uh, able to stuff the takedowns and keep moving, and circling out. You know, Thompson come away with the victory, but I think Masvidal's key to victory is going to be to to get inside, grind him up, and eventually get him to the ground and kind of beat him up there. So uh, I think it's a toss up, depending on what Masvidal's game plan is and what Thompson's game plan is. All right. Uh, also, Brian, we know that you're a family man, so I want to kind of end this uh, talking about you know your family itself. Uh, for, you know, one thing is, do your kids watch you fight? I mean, is is that something that you you let them do or? Yeah, actually, uh, they've watched all my fights um, from the beginning to where I am now. Uh, obviously, I didn't have some kids in the beginning, so you know. But my my very first amateur fight, my actually my only amateur fight, but my very first fight, uh, my son was actually at. And he was, you know, had ear headphones on and stuff to cover his ears from the sounds and stuff like that. He was there. He was just a baby, um, and he's watched it all the way up. And so, you know, my kids now, all of them will watch, all watch my fights. Uh, they were actually at my Nashville fight. It was the very first fight they ever been to. Um, 
you know, I kind of waited, you know, I don't know the atmosphere and stuff like that, depending on the fight and the event. Um, also, you know, I had a lot of friends and family at that event, so, uh, it was perfect timing, you know? So I brought my kids to that fight. They watched that live and, uh, they got to come in the back after and, and take pictures with me after the victory. And dude, that's, uh, you can't, I can never get that moment. You know, I'll have that moment forever saved in my mind and, uh, definitely to have the pictures and everything amazing you know it was a great experience and i uh, hope i look to do it again in the future uh, it's just going to depend on the event and how close it is right and what was your daughter's first fight uh that that she saw of yours uh i mean she saw well i mean she was a baby but i mean she was there <laughs> and like watched it on tv i guess you're sitting by the tv uh probably i had a, a lightweight fight before the ufc and uh, against, I can't even remember his name, something Moon. But uh, and then uh, my debut um, against goddamn Ellenberger against Ellenberger. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know she, you know she was just a baby, but yeah, she was surrounded by you know in the atmosphere. She's actually my daughter has been in the gym since she was two weeks old. Um, you know, sitting in the car seat. You know, my kids have been in the gym since they were little. Um, so they've been around it their whole lives. They understand that, you know, that's daddy's job, that's daddy's passion, and that's what he loves to do. And, you know, they're super supportive and excited. And, dude, it's, it's the best in the world. All right, fantastic. To, uh, share, to share this with my family, to share this with my kids, is, it's amazing. Fantastic. Uh, so, Brian, one last thing. Do you have any message for your fans in India? Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you uh, for, for following me and being my fans. And uh, it's, you know, it's unbelievable, like, the support I get and uh, people who follow me and follow my career and, you know, are, are wanting to, to hear about my life and what, what's coming next for me. So uh, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you to all the BAM fans in India. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Thank you for the support. I can't wait to come back and put on a show uh, for all you guys. I'm going to heal up. I'm going to get better. And I'm going to come put on a great show for you guys. Thank you, Brian. We wish you the best. Obviously, we want to see you back in the uh, Octagon pretty soon. And I will catch up with you again uh, before your next fight. Awesome. That sounds great. Thank you again for having me on. I look forward to talking to you again when I, it's come fight time. That's true. Thank you, sir. Have a good day.